Hey everyone, today's video, I want to do something a little bit different. We've had a major rotation from growth stocks to value stocks in the beginning of the year. And now it's like reversing where with all the value stocks, all that money, the smart money is going to growth stocks. So now we're seeing potential plays in the value stocks or in the dividend stocks. And I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about five stocks that I'm really, really watching. And I think there might be some opportunities in these five dividend paying stocks. Now let's look at the market, okay? I wanna look at the average PE ratio for the Toronto Stock Exchange and the S&P 500 just to give me a gauge of how expensive or how cheap the market is, okay? And I wanna just look at the average range. This is just a benchmark, you guys. It's like, like you go to the supermarket and you look at the price per pound for oranges or apples. You know when it gets expensive, like all of a sudden you have like 99 cents per pound for apples, which is probably pretty like standard or $1.99 per pound for apples. But then when you see $10.99 per apples, then you're like, okay, this better be some fancy apples, okay? Right, this is the way I'm using the price per earnings average to just get a gauge of the stock market, exactly the same thing. So I could see that with the Toronto Stock Exchange with the um, TSX 60, the Ford PE is around 60, which is within the range of average, okay? Of course, in the past, we've had seen P ratios way lower than that, like the 14s, but you know what, times have changed in that interest rates used to be a lot higher in the past. So it's not exactly the same market. We have super ultra low interest rates. So I would say it's within range. Then when I look at the S&P 500, when I look at the forward PE ratio, again, I look at the forward PE ratio, not the backwards looking PE ratio, because that's looking like last year. We always look forward because the stock market is forward looking. So I would say that comparing the S&P 500 to the TSX 60, then there's actually a few gems diamonds in the rough in the Toronto Stock Exchange. So this is where I want to dive deep and revealing the five stocks. A few of them are Canadian stocks. Now the first stock is AbbVie, which is a huge pharmaceutical company, okay? This is a huge dividend grower and it was getting slaughtered last year, okay? When I was looking at it and starting my position September 2020, I was just like, oh, the Ford P ratio was just so low and this company's fundamentals are so strong. I mean, it's got great cash flows. It's got great earnings performance. Performance. It's got great revenue. It's got, it's been paying down its debt. It's been doing everything right. Yet that stock, that company was just getting slaughtered. And of course, I, I'm such a bargain hunter. I had, I had to start building my position. Now, even though the company has surged and recovered a bit, I, I still think there's opportunity here. Now, just in case you didn't know what AbbVie is, it was one of the largest pharmaceutical companies and they own Allergen, which is Botox, you know, plastic surgery, all that kind of stuff, which we know like a lot of women love. I'm getting to the age where I'm probably gonna be looking at Botox in the near future. Okay, not now, but let's just say I've been eyeing Botox lately. There was a lot of fear over AbbVie last year because of legal issues, you know, their patents with Hemera's being like, Hemera's their primary drug that's been like 30% of the revenue. And there's fear over, you know, what is gonna happen after the patents go away and then, every, and then everyone competes with that drug. I think that AbbVie, has been making very smart acquisitions like Allergen, like in recently, which is like a no brainer. So I think that this is just a bit of a panic. I think that over time, AbbVie's gonna do great. It has a great return on vested capital. It's been doing very awesome. If you look at the financials, it's like a bit of a no brainer. The only risk is of course, um, the Himera drug, which is 30% of the revenue. Maybe you don't believe the allergen acquisition is gonna make it, so that might be something that you might wanna you know, investigate. And if you look at the tip ranks for Happy, it's like pretty good. Lots of analysts are giving a very, very strong buy rating. Now the second stock is Algonquin Power. Okay, I just wanna tell you full disclosure, I do have a bit of bias on renewable energy. Maybe it's because I used to be an environmental engineer. Maybe it's because I spent like, more than a decade cleaning up toxic sites, including oil spills. So I like to have an environmental play with my investments. They are one of the biggest renewable utility companies in all of Canada. Okay. If you believe renewable energy is the trend of the future, this might be something that's interesting to you. Now their current dividend is around 4% and they are a huge dividend grower. They've been growing their dividends for a very long, long time. 
Another thing I like about Algonquin Power, well, majority of their revenue is regulated, meaning they got like long-term agreements and contracts in place, which means that there is repeatable and reoccurring revenue, which is amazing. Now, this is not just some boring utility company, okay? It is transitioning big time into renewable energy. Now, although Algonquin Power has been losing momentum in the past six months i think this is like a potential opportunity i love it when stocks dip i love it when they start dropping i, I don't get excited when the stock starts going up and i mean it's great for the bank account but you kind of don't have that many buying opportunities so when i look at Algonquin power with the its massive dividend growth streak and, and the fact that they're transitioning into renewable energy and making that become their primary focus i just feel that there's a lot of potential Algonquin power to increase their dividends for the foreseeable future and if you do a discount cash flow on on Algonquin power and you know look at its financials it's like it's fairly discounted right now but of course do your own due diligence do your own research okay third company is Metro which is one of the largest grocery chains in Canada now they've been making really really good acquisitions so well that well you could tell with your return on invested capital is like double digits which is like amazing which means that they're really good investing their own capital they've been making really really smart acquisitions they've been acquiring pharmacies mom and pop shops really building their like network of groceries and pharmacy and all these stores that are all across Ontario Quebec and building out their brand like Food Basics, Super C. They even own a meal kit delivery service which is Miss Fresh. So to me, they're, I love their return invested capital. Now, although their dividend yield is nothing to get excited about, but I think if you're looking for an investment that's kind of boring, but predictable, you can trust that they make really smart acquisitions. This might be something that could be an opportunity because when you run the numbers, they look fairly undervalued. Now, the two risks that I see with Metro is the first one is Amazon, okay? And because Amazon's been getting into the pharmacy space and well, same with Metro. So that might be a bit of a competition, but you know what? If they survived this long while competing with Loblaws and Walmart, I'm just kind of thinking like with, I trust their return on invested capital. They've been making pretty strong acquisitions. Uh, the second thing is that in order to make these acquisitions, they had to acquire more debt. So I'm going to say if you look to invest in Metro, I would keep an eye on this debt, okay? Now, I'm so excited to say the next two stocks are in the financial sector. Now, the reason why I'm excited about it is because for the past year, there's been regulations telling the banks, hey, don't grow your dividends, don't increase your dividends, don't do any share buybacks. But because of course the uh, pandemic, okay, we gotta like, they were trying to like, you know, hoard their cash just in case there's a lot of loan defaults. So looks like regulations are starting to loosen up. There's this recent news that say maybe in the near future that banks are allowed to grow their dividends again. I'll be so excited when that happens. And this is why I'm looking at the first one is TD Bank and Manulife Financial. Okay, let's go into TD Bank first. Now I understand TD Bank has rocketed to all time highs, but we can't look at that. Okay, we gotta look at relative to, well, their net income, to their cash flows. And when I look at this and look at the rest of the top five banks in Canada, I feel like TD Bank is actually a little bit undervalued, just looking at PE ratio. Now their dividend yield is pretty respectable. Well, it's like in the 3.6-ish range, and that's gonna date today's video because it always fluctuates. I think it's pretty respectable. And given regulations are about to loosen up and allowing the big banks to grow their dividends, and given TD's bank amazing track record with growing their dividends at least like a compound annual growth rate of 9% plus plus over the past decade. Well, I'm gonna get really excited when these regulations loosen up because TD Bank has been making a ton of money. So I'm expecting them to grow their dividends for the foreseeable future. Now I like TD Bank in comparison to the top five banks because first it's a little bit undervalued compared to the other top five banks. Also, I like their area of growth, which is in the trading area and their thinkorswim platform has been getting really good reviews. So I think this is a really great source of reoccurring revenue for the foreseeable future. Now let's get into Manulife Financial. Although it's not the best insurance company relative to Sunlight from Great West Life, if you look at the financials, it is trading a little bit cheaper than the other two stocks. This is why I'm a little bit more interested in Manulife than the other two stocks. And because Manulife already rewards shareholders with a pretty respectable dividend yield, and combine the fact that 
While regulations are loosening up and allowing the financial sector to grow their dividends, although the stock may not do anything for the next few years, I think that combined with the dividend growth with a pretty respectable dividend yield, it's a good investment play for defensive investors only. So don't expect this stock to like give you massive returns on investment. I mean, this is dividend growth stocks. They're pretty boring. You're just relying it more like a better play than your savings account. But of course, please don't invest your like, emergency funds all into stocks because stocks are volatile. You could totally lose your money. Okay, so if you need your money within two years, I don't think you should invest in the stock market. That's just my opinion. Now, manual life is expected to grow in Asia. So I think that if they can continue to grow their revenues and grow their earnings and grow the cash flow, then they're gonna reward shareholders with growing dividends. But we got it. I think that it could also be a risk. Although there's a risk with expanding into Asia, we have no idea how successful they'll be. I think that they're given their really, really low P ratios, like, oh, it's too cheap for me to ignore. Hey everyone, I hope you found this video super helpful. Help a Canadian YouTuber out. Smash that like button. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.